This is the Erica Diamond Podcast, getting you motivated and inspired by conversations with today's thought leaders and coolest people. Each episode, get up close and personal with compelling guests who share stories and tips that empower you to live your best life. Now, let's get off the fence. Here's your host, Erica Diamond. Welcome to the Erica Diamond Podcast's second episode. I am so thrilled you're here. I'm excited to have Sharon Cohen, naturopath and friend, of course, on the show with us today. Sharon is a rock star who wears many, many hats. Sharon Cohen is living her best life by helping women to do the same when it comes to their health and well-being. She uses her perceptive interpersonal skills and extensive knowledge of naturopathic medicine to help women to make the connection between any troubling symptoms and what they may be having difficulty integrating into their lives. And I decided to have Sharon on the show today because in my life coaching practice and on the mat with my yoga students, on my blog, or hearing from viewers on global TV, people are walking around stressed, sleep deprived, and in a general funk. Our phones are glued to us. We're expected to be on call 24-7. We see everyone else's perfect life on social media, and anxiety and depression is up amongst even our teens. Health and wellness is a topic I am truly interested in. So today, we're going to get off the fence and get healthy, mind, body, and spirit. So welcome to the show, Sharon. I can't wait to dive in. Thank you for having me, Erica. I'm I'm really happy to be in this conversation with you. I think it's also a very important conversation. And so I just can't wait to learn from you and soak all the learning juices into our core and and share it with our listeners. Um, So let's start. You know, I'm interested, obviously, in your line of work. That's why you're here. And I know our listeners are going to be blown away today by your wisdom and expertise by the end of this episode. Take us a little bit on your journey, how you got into this line of work, and what exactly is a naturopath? Okay, so I was always interested in health and well-being. As a child, I would flip through my cousin's uh, medical journals. <laughs> he was a very important doctor, cardiologist here in Montreal. And um, as I got older, I um, was just interested in people's health and well-being and really their emotional states. That's, that's what excited me. Um, At the age of 25, I was 25 years old, my mother was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and that was a huge turning point in my life. And um, so I walked the journey with her through surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, and what I noticed was that she just kept getting weaker and weaker and weaker over two and a half years until she passed at 67 pounds. And that really devastated me. And yes, from an emotional point of view. And then when I healed and I grieved and healed somewhat, I started questioning and asking. And there were some beautiful parts of the whole medical journey, but there was some parts that were missing. How come she kept getting weaker and weaker and weaker? What was there to help her be strong? What was there to help her talk about what she was going through emotionally? Although we did somewhat have a great social worker sent to us. And so I went in search of this missing piece. I wasn't quite sure what it was, but one day when my son was one and he's now 27 and about to be married, I was invited to um, an information evening at a naturopathic school. And I went and I just knew that I had come home and it made... That's that's how I felt with blogging. I wrote my first blog post and I knew I was home, so I I relate to that. Oh, great. So I sat there, and I was like a sponge, and I said, wow, if we could actually bring the two together, you know, medicine and um, naturopathy and, and Eastern cultures and all of it, bring the best of everything together. And so I went home, and my husband said, so how, how was it? And I said, well, there's good news and bad news. And the good news is I loved it. I had the best evening. And the bad news is I'm going to be in school for the next three Three years. <laughs> oh boy, how did he take the news? <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of bittersweet, although he always supported me. So we figured out how I could do this. So um, I studied for three years and then um, uh, bonded it together with my degree in psychology. And so what is naturopathy? That's a great question. So it's really based on the healing powers of nature 
and uses gentle methods to boost the body's vital ability to heal because our body has great wisdom. So how could we best support each individual person to heal and maintain itself? So I believe every cell has the ability to heal itself if given, given a healthy environment. Ooh, that, sounds, that really does sound interesting. I've actually read studies that in spontaneous healing, actually, that our bodies have the ability to spontaneously heal. So let's leave it with that. I, I can't wait to hear more. So what I, I always like to ask questions that I would want to know because um, I hear so much from my readers and we generally want to know the same thing. So for those of us who may be walking around feeling not so great as everybody else's Instagram and Facebook feeds, hey, we all know that it feels, right? What are a few things you can do right now to lift your mood? Put down your phone. <laughs> Not so easy, Sharon. <laughs> well, at least have blocks of time. And if you have to schedule them, please do. But they have to, it, self-care must be as important as your appointments, as your work, as your clients, as whatever else that you do. It has to be. So the most important thing is to reconnect with yourself. And the easiest way that I find to do that is to go outside in nature. Yeah, that's what we hear, to, to get outside. Get outside, breathe fresh air, take off your shoes, because we are so disconnected wearing rubber between us and the earth. And it's a real thing grounding, where we can actually heal ourselves with the, our energy connected to the energy of the earth and lie even down in your backyard. Let your back and your whole body convene and get back to our roots. Sure. Um, so we want to soak it all in. Any self-care activities, you know, you're speaking about self-care, some other things we can do right now, other exercises to lift our mood. Um, obviously, if there's something deeper going on, it's time to seek you know, professional help, and, and that'll be you know, the last thing to conclude. But just some activities or exercises that we can do besides going outside that really incorporate self-care. Yes. So one of the things that you could do is has very much to do with what we put into our bodies, Erica. So really, sugar, caffeine. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like sugar. I like the fries. I think I like salt. Oh, the fries. No, I don't care about sugar. Okay. I, like, I, like, I like salt. <laughs> Processed food, junk foods, right? Ome like oil, vegetable oils, like we used to use the safflower and the sunflower and all of those omega-6 oils. There's too much. So, And sh sugar, too many grains can turn to sugar, create us... Um, feeling kind of spacey and caffeine can have us feeling shaky and and not and when we're spacey we don't feel here and grounded and healthy and well so one of the things we could do is turn to whole fresh nutrient dense foods right like nature gives it to us the least processed the more whole I, I know, you know, for me, self-care means stepping on my mat in yes. the mornings. So as I start my day, I start on my mat as a yoga teacher, meditation. Um, so before the whole hoopla of the morning breakfast routine and brush your teeth, come for breakfast. And so the frenetic whirlwind, and I actually can, you know, I visualize like Mary Poppins <laughs> sort of like, and all the moving parts. Yes. I need to start my day feeling calm because I feel as the mom, I'm the centrifugal force of the house. And so that energy will spin out. So I, I'm sure stepping Beautiful. on your mat and yoga and all that stuff is also self-care. I mean, at yes. least it is for me. Very much so. Yes. Yeah. What are some of the common issues you see in your practice, Sharon? And, and what are some remedies that you may offer your clients for those common problems that you're seeing? Okay. So um, a lot of women come to me with digestive challenges, whether it be gas, bloating, IBS, Crohn's, colitis, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the first question I ask is, what are you having a hard time digesting in your life? <laughs> you sound like my mom. Like you mean emotionally, what are you having yes. a hard time digesting? <laughs> yes. And Good question. Yes. And so I am definitely uh, feel that it's important to work holistically as a naturopath. So really, to be a human being is to be of body, mind, and spirit, right? So we have to address all of it. And so therefore, 
Um, I usually see that people come in with extreme health challenges after a real a big challenge or change in their life, whether it be a separation, whether it be moving, whether it be a death in the family, whether it be kids moving out of the house. Divorce. Divorce, any yes. Of any of these. And and it really takes a toll on our body when we're creating an l- awful lot of stress hormone. And it's really important either by ourself or sometimes it's really difficult to look at those issues by ourself. So get support. Somebody... Um, a therapist, a counselor, a coach, somebody who could really be with you and get what you're going through. And some other techniques I use are journaling and sometimes just to write it out, you know? And if you stick with it long enough, we go from the conscious mind to the subconscious. And sometimes we don't even realize, wow, I didn't even know that was in there, right? So um, as far as also digestive disorders... Our diet is extremely, extremely important. And as I said before, looking to eat nutrient-dense foods that agree with us, that feel well. People say, what are you? Are you a vegetarian? Are you a vegan? Are you, you know, I'm an intuitive eater (laughs) is what I am. (laughs) I love that too. I know, I, I know when I feel, when I eat meat, I happen to feel great. Right. There you go. So I think we have to eat for what makes us feel good. And and I'm not a nutritionist, but I know that yes. I listen to my body and I think that's a good I love that, an intuitive eater. Yes. And so are we listening? It's so important to listen. So many people, because of our busy lives, we shove food down and expect it to create these amazingly vital and healthy cells. But imagine if you're eating and you're stressed and you're rushed, what's happening with your whole digestive system? It's tense, it's tight. It's we need to honor and welcome the food into our body as if it's sacred as it is because it's creating our cells. That's a great point. And you know what I do, Sharon, for that? So I like to meal prep on Sunday. So I resist the temptation to grab something unhealthy or fast on the go. So for me, self-care is also meal prepping on Sunday so that my body that is my temple will be able to sit down with good, proper, nutritious, homemade food that I made. And instead of not meal prepping, grabbing something on the go, I've carefully been mindful. And so I am mindful about what I put in my body. So that's, I know what we eat is important. We eat. It's very important. And to pay attention, be awake and aware. How do you feel after certain foods, right? Sure. Be- because not everybody is the same. Keep a food journal if you're not feeling that well in your digestive system and see what agrees with you. You know, it. you could say it's so healthy to eat greens and it is, but for some people they won't feel well. So maybe they need to lightly cook them so that they're pre-digested. So there's many ways, but be awake and aware, be conscious of how you feel when you eat. So the nutrition, I guess, is not a one size fits all Nothing is one size fits all, really. You are right. Okay. Really. And yes. So, so you talk about, you know, knowing if our bodies are bogged down with heavy metals from our water and food source, fish, air pollution, antiperspirant, wow, aluminum pots and pans, etc. And you say it might explain our symptoms of fatigue and joint pain and hormone imbalance, a foggy brain, digestive orders like you just talked about, nervous system challenges, and even weight gain. So how can hair analysis, I can't wait to hear this one, how can hair analysis see if you're actually carrying around these metals in your body? And if so, how do we release these metals from our body? This is like a big question. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about how we get uh, toxins into our body. So there's heavy metals and then there's toxins. Um We live in a world, unfortunately, that's quite toxic. So our water has um, toxins in it, Our therefore it goes to our food source. Our food is sprayed unless we're having very organic, clean food with herbicides, pesticides, and a product called glyphosate, thanks to Monsanto, or not thanks to Monsanto, which is their Roundup product. This glyphosate works like a low-level antibiotics in our system all the time. Okay, it really wreaks havoc with our uh, gut biome, which is all about the good to bad bacteria. Okay, 
And so you talked also about aluminum pots and pans. When we have too much aluminum, that's a heavy metal in our body. It could sit in the joints. It could uh, lower our immunity. It could affect our nervous system. So aluminum pots and pans and also antiperspirant that has aluminum. So I'm a big advocate of get the chemicals out of the house. We're clean. We don't need really heavy duty chemicals in the home. I actually gave up antiperspirant two years ago and I switched to deodorant and I go, as Sharon is clapping her hands. And when I go to the gym, I got to be honest, I got sweat <laughs> pouring from my underarms, but it didn't feel natural to me to have my sweat ducts blocked while I'm sweating with antiperspirant and then aluminum going into my breast yes. tissue and my lymph nodes. It just didn't make sense. And that's the only reason why I stopped, not because of anything I read. It was common sense living for me. Yes. And, and I also recommend to do a more natural deodorant, something that is from nature or a salt stick or some of the wonderful herbs that we have that really help out with the smell. But don't create, you know, these perfumey deodorants that our perfume over our, um, you know, bad smell or what have you smells terrible, way worse. <laughs> so I found Native. I love the brand Native. It's really, if you Google it out there, it's natural, it's organic, it's really, it, you know, there's unscented. I use the unscented, but it's a really all natural, great brand um, that I love. So if we have metals or any of these in our body, how do we release them? Yes. So first of all, let's talk about how we can find out about getting to how, if we have heavy metals, right? It's a very simple test. We could just take hair because the hairs are your cells. So we can actually see what's going on inside the body in the cells. And one great way to find out about heavy metals is to take a hair sample. So I work with a, a chemist in Nepean, Ontario. And with the, the hair mineral analysis, we can find out about the seven major metals and not only if they're there, but how, what is the quantity. And we could find out also about the state of the minerals in your bones and find out if you are having a depletion of minerals even before a bone density. Um, the bone density, you need to be missing 20, approximately 20% bone before they find anything. We also see the state of your adrenal glands, which could be in trouble due to chronic stress. And we see if your gut is absorbing your minerals because we are not Erica, what we eat, but we are actually, our cells are actually what we absorb. Okay. So some of the ways to take out metals, there's, it depends on the metal. There's individualized ways. However, as a general eating cilantro, cilantro binds to heavy metals and pulls it out of the body. So that's one easy thing that we could do daily. There's also cilantro no, no, tea. No joke, I had cilantro with my lunch today. So now I'm feeling so good. Yay, <laughs> woo! <laughs> Excellent. And there's also uh, chlorella, which is an algae. And so we can add some chlorella to our waters in the morning, and that's a gentle detox. There's also detoxifying herbs and to eat at this time, we need to really take care of our livers, okay? It's detox time. The livers are filter. It's like, imagine your furnace, Erica, and it doesn't, ha if you don't change the filters in the furnace, what happens? Everything backs up into the house. Eventually things stop working. Yes, exactly. So we need to do a gentle liver cleanse. So things that could help with that, especially if this is a great time, are our greens, especially dandelions, and radicchio, arugula, lemons, limes, apple cider vinegar with the mother, so raw apple cider vinegar, and these are bitters. Our livers love bitters. So if you can have a plate of greens mixed with some of the things I just recommend and squeeze lemons or limes all over it, it's a wonderful thing. I'm learning, I'm learning with every question. <laughs> so, so once we're actually on the hair analysis topic, talk to me a little bit about, I mean, we touched on food intolerance, but talk to me also about hormone saliva testing. And um, I just, we know that so many people suffer from food intolerances today. So talk to me a little bit more about that and, and this hormone saliva testing that you do as well. 
Yes. So um, with all of the chemicals that we, I've talked about that we have in our water source, in our food source, and even plastics, so many plastics that are getting now into our drinking water, our food, different places, could be a big problem. They interfere with our estrogen levels as well. If we're toxic, that could wreak havoc as well. If we have too much stress hormone, right, that interferes or imbalances the estrogen, the progesterone, the testosterone, even our sleep hormones, right? We need a lot of serotonin to create melatonin to get a good night's sleep. And the other things that interfere with sleep are that we used to, before we had 24-hour lighting, we used to have about a 12-hour day. Now we have like a 16-hour day. And sometimes people are working or the lights are on through the night. It's really unhealthy. We need to move away from our electronics. We need to wind down at night. We need to close down our lights. Okay, so you're getting ahead of me because I'm going to ask you all about sleep I'm because so it's, it's what I hear a lot about. Oh, I'm trying to decrease my stress, but I don't sleep at night and my mind is racing, so we'll get there. But this hormone saliva testing, is this similar to the hair testing? Are no. we finding out the same thing? No. So what we're looking for is um, cortisol levels, right? So as you've probably heard, that when we're very stressed, we go into fight or flight, where so what is fight or flight fight or flight is when our we're creating all these stress hormones and everything all these all of these hormones go to our muscles okay so it's not a good time to be eating when we're super stressed because the energy is not in our digestive system. We don't need it. If your kid is stuck under a car, you've ever heard of these mothers that all of a sudden they have this incredible strength and they're able to move a car or something. That's because they go into fight or flight. Everything goes into the muscles and to the extremities so you could fight or flee. Okay? Now, that's normal. When the trauma's over, all the stress hormones are supposed to go down and we go back to our regular routine and calm down. But a lot of us are in this fight or flight all day long because we're on the go. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do this. I have to do that. Right. Can hardly breathe. And what does that do to a body over time? I can imagine. Very good. <laughs> no. So when you have elevated cortisol like that, which we could see in a test like that, it's very hard in blood tests because they usually take the blood tests at the hospital once. You really have to take it four times in a day because cortisol fluctuates throughout the day. It should be high to wake you up in the morning, low to get you to for you to rest and sleep at night. And what it does over time, it wreaks havoc on the nervous system, brings down, lowers immunity. So you find people getting more sick, more challenged, right? And all of us have cells in our body that are challenged, including cancer, but the immune system should be able to, if it's very strong, take care of it, right? I find this stuff really interesting. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're going to go there now. I'm, I'm super interested in a calm mind. Um, and, and I really do try and take care of, of, of that mind to keep it calm. And you speak a lot about this topic. So how can we help racing minds during the day or a night during sleep? How can we kind of stay centered and grounded in the storm, <laughs> in the eye of the storm? Well, you already mentioned meditation and yoga. You know, I think so many of my clients have said to me in the past, you know, um, I don't have time. I don't have time. Well, what I realized after 23 years of seeing women in my practice is that I don't have time to not meditate <laughs> because I am so much more, like you said, grounded, here, focused, connected, and calm. You know, when I, when I take that time, and it doesn't have to be hours, because the more you do it, the more your brain has access and knows, I could do it. I could do it, right? I could do it. And so having a practice is of utmost importance. And it could be 30 minutes a day, right? So I forget your question. But <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's it's more about you know a racing mind and how yes. you talked about sleep. So we're lying in bed at night. Yes. Any tips or, or suggestions on what yes. to do if our minds are racing and we need and we know we need the sleep? How do we get back yes. to sleep? So first thing is have a practice, meditate. And so many people say, my mind's too busy. I can't calm it to meditate. Put on a guided meditation because listening to somebody's voice will have a focus. And all meditation is, right, is being in the here and now, right? I, I, so I started meditating about seven, eight years ago. I've become so good at it that the minute I lie down, the minute that I listen to these guided tapes, I, I don't know where my mind is, and you probably know from a physiological space better than me, I float off and drift off. I'm not sleeping, but I don't feel awake. I mean, three minutes into my guided meditation, I've, my body has floated off and I set my alarm in 20 minutes because I'm afraid I, I won't come back on my own. My body knows and it craves yes. this relaxation. So when you said the more you do it, the more your body gets used to it, I'm for sure living proof of that. Yes. And we have an internal pharmacy within us, right? And we have the ability to switch on and off these hormones to create more and to create less. And as we have a practice like that, you'll be creating more of the calming hormones, right? To calm your, yourself down. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And the other thing is you must turn off electronics. And if you're very sensitive and suffer from insomnia, even think about turning off your modem, your Wi-Fi at night, right? Because it puts electromagnetic frequency through your house. So if you have your computer and a TV and your modem on and I don't know, God knows what else, right? I'm very actually, my husband knows, I'm really actually paranoid about our modem as far as more cancer and invisible waves. And so forget about sleep. I sleep beautifully well, thank goodness. But I'm worried about my modem and what's invisible that I don't see and cancer. That, that's more what, what, what freaks me out. But turning off your modem is, is a, I'm, I'm going to try that. It's a, it's a good thing at night to have uh, less stimulation. Also, um, make, be mindful of what you eat. Eating three hours before you sleep isn't a great idea because then the body is in work mode. It's trying to digest. Now, if you have a fruit an hour before, that's okay. Um, but if you're eating proteins late at night, you'll be in digestive mode. You want to be, it will take you away from your relaxing mode. So basically dinner early is your suggestion. Dinner early. And if you want something like a fruit or celery sticks, carrot sticks later on, if you need a little something with lots of water, that would be totally fine. But you want to be in rest mode. And there's also wonderful essential oils that you could put in a diffuser by your bed. As we have going right now next to us, I made sure when Sharon came that we have some nice smells in the air, relaxing, calm. Totally, totally. So things like lavender, vervain, chamomile, and you can also drink these teas, which are very calming as well, right? And if you some have, great sleep tips. I was just going to say, if you... if. Don't have heavy conversations at night. You know, if there's something <laughs> bothering you and you need to speak to your, your husband or your child, don't have those conversations before bed. <laughs> what a great point, Sharon. What are you curious about right now? I, I often ask my guests, what are you curious about right now? Okay. I'm really curious about epigenetics or the mitochondria. Wow. Do <laughs> you know, they have found out finally, this is something that in, in the field of naturopathy we've, we've believed for a while though, that genetics is only a small part of what we take forward into our lives. Maybe it is said five to 10%. Because a lot of people used to come to my office and say, well, you know, my mother had a heart attack and her sister did and my so cousin, well, and so I team. will. <laughs> and so I really think, and the studies are showing that it's more about our beliefs and our patterns that we carry forward from our generations than the actual genes. So you have a lot of control through your mind, your beliefs, to change those old beliefs and patterns that aren't serving you. 
Yeah, we're, we're, we're reading a lot of research on, on rewiring the brain. And so I've done a lot of this research on Carol Dweck's research on, you know, fixed mindset versus growth mindset and rewiring those patterns. So th I think that's encouraging to us. And I think that works both well or not well. In other words, we could have maybe healthy genes that we're toxifying with our thought processes, or we can come from maybe an illness in our family that we can change, that we can change for the better based on how we take care of ourselves. Yes. So that's exciting. And a lot of it is environmental, right, as well. And um, so we have hold a lot of beliefs from zero to seven years old. We are like a sponge. Reason and reasoning hasn't yet kicked in. So whatever we're told, you know, you won't be good in math. Okay, I won't be good in math. You're not really smart. Okay, I'm not. All of that, what we are told, or that you will get some kind of disease or you're not healthy it goes into the deep unconscious, right? And so it's really important to kind of um, bring that up and look and question sometimes, what are the beliefs I carry? And are they serving me right now? Because know that we could change them as well, right? Yeah, and so, so, so our young mothers, our, our mothers listening out there with young children, zero to seven are important years. I didn't know that. Yes, extremely important. And please don't beat yourself up because as I told my kids, I didn't know that at the time. And I told my kids, listen, I'm sure some things I did, you know, will mess you up and you'll have me to complain about. But don't worry, I have a nice fun therapy fund if you ever need it. <laughs> and be kind to, and loving to ourselves because that's a great example that we should could show our kids, even though we may have messed up along the way. And you, you sound like you're doing a, a great job. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is the mitochondria. It's a fascinating exploration because now that we understand there's mitochondria in each and every cell and it's the powerhouse. It's where energy is created. It's the place where the on and off switches of diseases reside. And the latest studies from UCLA show us that, yes, a healthy diet, um, as well as exercise, movement, fresh air, light, um, minimizing stress hormone, and some of the most important things are having moments of awe in our life. Awe is at the base of gratitude and appreciation, compassion, and the studies are showing us that it actually changes our hormone structure. So awe as in wonder is in your 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 you're in awe of what you're seeing, literally? Yes. And so there's millions of dollars spent to go to um Yosemite Park, to go to the Grand Canyon, to see the Cirque du Soleil. Why? Because people thrive on moment, these moments of awe. However, there's, they don't have to all be grandiose. Eric, I remember when I was younger and I was walking with my son, he was three years old, you know, and I was all in my head about what am I going to cook for dinner and I have to go grocery shopping and, you know, how many clients do I have to get ready for tomorrow? And then my son went, mommy, mommy, look at that flower growing in between the sidewalk. And he was so excited. And I stopped and I looked at this purple flower and it was like, oh. <gasps> Oh my gosh. And that was a simple moment of awe, but it had me stop and be present because before that I was using so much of my energy being in my head. I wasn't even there. Welcome to most of the population being in there, being in their heads. So we spoke a little bit about, you know, some of the rituals and activities you like to do to relax. How does Sharon relax? Anything that I missed? Um, I think there's another technique that's worth mentioning that's really easy, really important, and it works super well for anxiety. I talk to a lot of the young ladies that I have that come to see me about it or kids going to write exams that are super stressed. EFT tapping 
emotional freedom technique. And you could see the videos on YouTube with Gary Craig. He's the founder. And you could tap your stress away. It's like self-acupuncture. It's great for kids. My, my kids would do it. So it's really about... Um, Tapping into the acupuncture points when we you, you've heard of the meridians, Erica. Yes, of course. Of course. Okay. But tell us, are we physically tapping or we're we tapping into You're our mind or we're physically tapping? Good question. So these meridian points are real and you're actually physically tapping. So there's these points that you tap and there are points on the meridians and they start with the top of the head and the sides of the hands and it's the sides of the eyes and you could see it on the EFT. It's, there, it's being taught by therapists all around the world and you will physically tap and my son when he went to write exam would physically be tapping his hands underneath the desk so nobody could see and it would calm down his stress. I, I truly welcome the days where these things are mainstream because you talk about tapping. I talk to my kids a lot about breathing and deep diaphragmatic breath and I'm a big subscriber of Dr. Andrew Wow's breathing and his 478 breath for stress and sleep. So I think we're almost out of time. I, I want to know if I've missed anything or something you want to share with our with our listeners before I go. This was such a wealth of packed information and knowledge. I'm going to walk away feeling so relaxed. Uh, um, anything else that I missed that you want to share? Um, I just um, see that with women especially, because that's kind of my demographic, <laughs> is um, I was asked six years ago by a group of women to take them out of their environment so they can have a week for themselves just to have a deep inner journey without the phone, without the kids, without the cooking and the laundry. <laughs> Sounds divine. And just focus in on you and who are you today and what are your passions? What are you here for? What are you doing you know, what are you doing in life, whatever you're doing for, what calls you forward to take a week for you to breathe, to learn techniques, to set up a practice for you so that you could go home and regenerate. So um, when I had this request, I started taking women to Costa Rica um, to have this time of a beautiful inner journey. And so I do that every February. Um, it's a, an incredible experience of sisterhood because that's the other thing, you know, when women come together and support each other to really shine in their greatness. And I'm all about what, if you think you have nothing to offer this world as a woman, ask your friends, what are your gifts and what are your talents? Because you may have forgotten, but it's so important to be living those gifts and talents and sharing them in the world because you're the only person who can. There's nobody else like you and the world will be ripped off if we don't get your greatness. I think that's just such a perfect place to end, such an inspiring place to end. And that Costa Rica retreat sounds wonderful right about now as I'm trying to get over a cold and so... Working on myself sounds like a great idea. Sharon, it was such a pleasure learning, getting to know you, being inspired and empowered, and learning more about naturopathy. So um, I'm going to share in the notes how people can get a hold of you and get in touch with you if they want more of you. And thank you so much for joining us today. It is my great, great pleasure to be here with you. Thank you, Erica. And thank you to anybody who's listening. Thank you. And we'll speak to you and hear from you soon. Thank you for listening to the Erica Diamond Podcast. For more inspirational content, head over to womenonthevents.com. Loved this episode of the Erica Diamond Podcast? Subscribe on iTunes and leave a rating or review. It's very much appreciated. Until next time.